Biopack Student Lab BSL4 Pro Overview. In this screencast, we'll learn how to create lessons in BSL4. You can easily create your own customized lessons using BSL4 Pro features. There's no programming knowledge required. You use easy drop-down menu selections. There's a wide variety of preset channel options, and you can set up your own analog, digital, and calculation channels. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to start the BSL4 software in the correct mode, how to set up our desired channels, how to set up our acquisition parameters, then we'll record some data to verify our settings, then we'll create lesson instructions and a data report, after that we'll save the lesson as a template file, and I'll show you how students can open the lesson on lab day. Okay, first, how to launch the Biopack Student Lab software in the correct mode to create our own lesson. After launching the BSL4 icon from your desktop or program file, you'll be prompted with a pop-up menu that looks like this. From here, what you're going to do is select the radio button next to create slash record a new experiment. After this, you're going to select the radio button that says create empty graph, and then you'll hit OK. Now that we've started the software in the correct mode, let's look at how to set up our desired channels. Once your graph window opens up, it should look similar to this. Now, to set up our channels, we go over to the MP36 menu and click on Set Up Channels. For this tutorial, let's set up one channel of EMG, one channel of grip strength from a hand dynamometer, and also a calculation channel to give us our integrated EMG. First, we'll start with our analog channels. These are from the transducers and electrodes that we're plugging in to the front of our Biopack Student Lab system. It defaults to acquire from channel 1. We'll keep that for now for our EMG, and we'll keep the acquire, plot, and value boxes checked. What that means is that we'd like to acquire data from the channel, plot it on the screen, and enable the value display. So now we can click this drop down menu for preset and select EMG. That sets up our EMG channel. Next, we can select these three buttons again and go back to the preset drop down and select clinch force. You'll see that we have options for kilogram, pounds, and newtons. We'll select kilograms. Now we've got both of our analog channels set up and we can go over to the Calculation tab. Once on the Calculation tab, we have to enable the first Calculation channel. Again, I'll click all three of these boxes. I'll click the drop-down menu for the preset and scroll down to EMG Integrated. Now, we'll verify our settings by clicking on Setup to make sure that our integrated EMG is being calculated from the correct source channel, which is the EMG channel and not the clinch force. We'll click OK, and now we can hit the red X to close out of the dialog box and save our channel selections. Now that we've set up our channels, we can move on to setting up our acquisition parameters. To set up our acquisition parameters, we go back to the MP36 menu and click the second option, which is Set Up Acquisition. Here, a dialog box will open that shows the default settings. The system is set to record and append using memory. What append means is that you can pause between segments. So if you're doing multiple experimental conditions, you'll want to use append mode so that students can record multiple segments while pausing between the protocols. You can record to memory or hard disk. Next, we'll look at the sample rate. The default is 1,000 samples per second. You can change this, but 1,000 samples per second is usually sufficient for most physiological signals. Next, we can choose how long our acquisition length is going to be. The default is 30 minutes. You can change this to a longer acquisition if you think your students will be recording more than 30 minutes of data, or you can reduce the amount to 15 or 20. You'll want to make sure to put in some extra minutes just in case the students record more data than necessary. You don't want them to run out of recording space halfway through a lesson. Once you've verified your acquisition settings, again, you can X out of the dialog box and that will save your acquisition settings for the lab. Now that we've set up our acquisition parameters, let's record some data to verify our settings. 
our system is set up, similar to this picture here from the Lesson 2 procedure. We have the SS2L for our EMG plugged into channel 1, and an SS25LA hand dynamometer plugged into channel 2. We're going to set up our le electrodes similar to this, with our red lead, black lead, and white lead connected to the subject as shown. Then, we'll have our subject grip the hand dynamometer and record a few clinches to verify our settings. Let's do that now. I'm going to click on Start and record a few clenches. Now you can see the data being recorded, but you'll see that it is not scaled optimally for our window. To fix this, we can go up to the display menu and click on Auto Scale Waveforms. Now you'll see our raw EMG on the first channel, our clench force on the second channel, and the integrated EMG on the third channel. Now that we've recorded a few clenches, we can click on Stop. This will pause our recording. We can now go to the display menu and click on Auto Scale Horizontal to see the data we just recorded. As you can see by our data, our settings are correctly configured for the lab. We can now move on to the next step in creating our own lesson. Now let's take a look at how to create lesson instructions and a data report. To create our lesson instructions and data report, we're going to use the journal that's built into the Biopack Student Lab software. You'll see this journal here at the bottom of our window. It can also be toggled on and off by using the journal button in the toolbar. Now I'm going to drag this to be larger so we can see what we're doing. And now we can edit this journal. It's a fully editable text journal with formatting, font, font size, bold, italic, underline, justification. Uh, you can also insert tables, which you'll see will be very important for our data report. So you can begin typing in your lab instructions. Continue adding instructions until you've completed all the segments you would like your students to record. And then afterwards, we can begin on the data report. A useful tool for creating our data report is the table tool. To access this, we click on the table button on the toolbar. And now we can select how many rows and how many columns that we would like in our table. It's going to insert the table where our cursor was located, which in this case was at the beginning of our data report. We can now fill in all of the variables we'd like for our table. And once we've filled out our table, it will look something like this. Now, when the students are finished recording their data, they can follow along with the table, go up to their first cycle, highlight, and then look at what they're supposed to find. So for this table, we're looking for the max of cycle one for both the integrated EMG and the clench force data. So we can go up to our measurement bar and we'll see the max. Now here the max is 0 0.00637 millivolts per second. So you can type that in. Or what you can do is right click and go insert single measurement value. And we'll pick row A, column one, max and click OK. And you'll see that inserts our same value without having to type it. This is useful for when students are taking measurements. They can easily just right click in the table and paste their measurements. Now we have the completed lesson instructions and a completed blank data report for the students to fill in when they've completed recording their data. Now that we've set up our channels, our acquisition parameters, verified our settings and created our instructions and data report, we're ready to save this lesson as a template file so that students will be ready to open it up on lab day. To save our file as a template, we'll go to the file menu, click on save as, choose our save location, in this case we'll just save it to the desktop, choose our file name, we'll call this lesson EMG2, and then, instead of saving as RAF, which would just save the data we recorded, we're going to hit the drop-down menu and select Graph Template. And then, we click Save. Now, we're prompted with a message that says this will erase all data from the graph. Basically, what this message is telling us is that we're not saving this data. We're saving the settings. So when the students open up this file, there will be no data displayed in the graph window. So we click yes. Once the lesson saves as a template, 
you'll see, again, as the message prompted us, that our data has disappeared. And it's now titled Lesson EMG2.GTL. This is what students are going to see when they open up for lab day. So they'll see the lesson instructions down here at the bottom. They'll have their data window here at the top, and they'll be ready to record their data. Now we've finished creating our lesson, but let's just take a look at how the students will open this completed lesson on lab day. To launch the lesson on lab day, students simply find it on the desktop, right here, lesson EMG2, and double click. The software will then load our template file. Now all the students have to do is connect their electrodes, grab their transducer, and follow the instructions you've created to record data. Simply click start and record that first segment following your lesson protocol. We've now created our own Biopack Student Lab Pro Lesson. For more information on creating lessons in BSL4, you can look at the available resources under the help menu in the software. These include the BSL Pro Manual, Pro Tutorial, and Hardware Guide. You can also contact our support department at support at biopack.com or give us a call at 805-685-0066. Current BSL 3.7 users also be sure to contact us to upgrade to BSL 4 today.